What is missing from this picture? What is lacking? What do we have here? We have homegrown tomatoes. In fact, the first big boys are finally coming in. I've been plucking these little cherry tomatoes for uh, most of the season so far. And in fact, there's some wet some down there. So let's do something about that. These are great, but they're a pain to pick. You need about, I don't know, 50 of them for a good salad. I think there's five of them right now. Anyway, the, this is to uh, celebrate the fact that, yeah, the good tomatoes are finally coming in the back door. And um, these heirlooms are destined for a insalata caprese tonight or tomorrow. Insalata caprese, right? Great salad. What's it made of? Fantastic tomatoes. A bit of basil on top. Drizzled with great olive oil. This one's from Rioja, Spain. In fact, pardon me, <laughs> um, we actually carry a great Rioja wine from the same producer of this olive oil. So it's kind of cool. You get wine country olive oil from all the way from Spain. And then we, of course, have some Spanish sea salt going on here, too. Something's missing. What's missing? I can tell you, this is missing, but it's here right now. I think we only have about eight units though for this entire weekend because it's selling like crazy now. Why? Because your tomatoes are coming in and everybody's in the mood for insalata caprese. Yes, here is burrata, that beautiful cheese that can be done domestically nowadays, but we prefer to bring in the real stuff from Puglia, Italy. And tried and true, I've had a lot of these over the last couple of years. Just wanna say we have it right now. We won't have it for long. We want to keep it fresh so we don't overbuy, so that we, every week, like every Thursday, we restock. We have a little bit right now, but pretty soon it will be missing from this picture, truly. Just a little commercial for the burrata and some great olive oil. And no, you can't have any of my tomatoes, not yet. Maybe in a couple of weeks, because all of a sudden I'm going to have too many. But that's how we wanted to start today's video. Welcome, it's good to have you. Today is September 2nd, 19, no, it's 20, I guess, wow. Can you believe it? It's 20, 21. My golly, how did that happen? Well, as usual, we have a few things to tell you about besides great burrata cheese. And some of this is reiteration, but some of you may not have seen last week's video. So we want to say, first of all, what can we put up as a prop? Let's put this up here. This is a bottle of Carignan. Carignan is the name of a grape variety that's not discussed over much, but it is really important for Rhone wines, for South of France wines in general. Carignan, the grape variety, happens in Spain as well. In fact, we believe it came from Spain. It's also over in Italy. It's uh, grown in North Africa and even in Israel. I believe Linda and Larry brought back a bottle of Israeli Carignan. Once when they were visiting the Holy Lands, they, uh, Came all the way back with a bottle of that to share. At any anyway, rate, this is carry on from Mendocino County. Big deal. This has two topics. I still have tomato skins in my mouth. Oh well. Um, we want to let you know, remind you, that the news of last week remains news. We are making a wine, 100 cases of it, that will be out in a year and a half. We have to pay the grape grower right now. We have to pay the winery where it's being made for us with our oversight. We are very involved in making this wine. We have to pay them now. So there's bills to be paid. And we just thought of those 100 cases, why don't we sell 25 of them as futures? So you still have the opportunity to go onto our website, thewinesteward.com and buy a six bottle bundle of futures. In other words, pay now, a lower price now, uh, in order to uh, enjoy this in a year and a half when we finally release it, when it gets out of the barrel and bottled and comes to our store. All 100 cases will arrive at one time. 25 of those will be pre-sold to people who are buying it at a lower price as a futures deal. This is our domain, a Plus to be wine. We are accessing some of the oldest vines in California for it. It is going to be consisting mainly of Maved, Mavedro, if you will, and Carignan and uh, hence the Carignan prop right here. And in this case, the vines are 
Surviving in sandy soils up in Oakley, California. That's right, Contra Costa County actually plays host to some of the oldest grapevines in California. These suckers are over 100 years old. They're gnarly, they're cool looking, and uh, they put out a beautiful product because they don't put out much of a crop anymore. Uh, so all of that en energy is concentrated on the few clusters that are put out. So we're very excited about this next Pluto D wine 2021 vintage. It has been picked, it was picked last week. It is fermenting right now at a winery up in Sonoma and it is being babysat by our friend Adam Webb. So we cannot wait to share that with you. And we're very, very pleased and grateful for the uh, orders that have already come in for some futures. I can tell you that uh, we're good. we've sold about one third of that 25 case amount at least so far. So um, for those of you who have not gotten in yet, it will be cut off. We will stop the program when we sell 25 cases and they come in six bottle lots. All right, so there's that. Now, why don't we leave this up here and say that this is in fact one of the wines that we're gonna pour at next week's event for which we still have seats. We would love to fill it to 24 people because 24 people means I can confidently open two bottles each of really good wines and our budget is satisfied with those 24 seats and enabling the opening of, let's say, 12 or 13 fantastic Roan and Ronish wines. Hence the name of this event, Only the Ronely. Only the Ronely will consist of wines from the Rhone Valley of France, Grenache, Syrah, Mavedra, and blends thereof, and then wines inspired by that area grown all over the place elsewhere. So we will probably go to Washington State for a fantastic Syrah, one that I just tasted up there. We will, uh, you know, we're going to go here. We're going to go to Italy. Hey, look at this. It doesn't say it on the label, but this is made of Carignano. Carignano. Say it like that. It's um, Italiano. And you are, in fact, looking at the exact same grape variety, Carignan and Carignano. I told you it's grown in different places. And why don't we try Carignan? In fact, let's have a Carignan immersion. Or why don't we try three Carignans so that we finally know what that grape contributes to the blends. It's normally not done as a varietal. Um, these are rare varietals thereof, but it is often added as a 5% addition, sometimes 10 or 15, to a wine in the south of France and elsewhere. And one should wonder, if one is a great wine student, what does Carignan contribute? We will finally find out by trying three varietal expressions of that grape. What else should we do? Well, of course, in the Southern Rhone Valley of France, they rarely make a mono varietal. In other words, they usually blend instead of making like 100% of something. And Chateauneuf de Pop is a fantastic and very famous example of that. And this is one of the great Chateauneuf de Pops. Pego, I called, uh, I, I discussed this last week. I said we were gonna pour it because we just got a nice amount of it in. Haven't had this wine in a while. I can't wait to have it with you next Tuesday night. Only the Rhone, about half of the menu consists of wines from the Rhone Valley of France, the other half wines inspired by that place that will take us all over the globe. Who knows where we're headed? I'm still making the decisions. I've got most of them and I've got a list. The list is too long of ideas and I have to whittle it down to make it reasonable. But let's see some more science. I've got a lot of wine. I need some more people to attend Only the Rhone next Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. I can tell you that the $46 uh, that we're charging for these seats is frankly not enough per all the good things that we are opening. So let's uh, support that cause, shall we? Be a great wine student and we'll give you nice pricing that night on orders you would like to leave behind. Finally, I'd like to tell you about what we're pouring on the wine bar this weekend. This weekly video is our way of kind of import, imparting that knowledge. I've just, I've just put out the menu. It's, uh, it's being uh, assembled all of the wines uh, are uh, now being put in the cooler, those that need to be cold, and the red wines are getting open. I already have a bottle of each open here because I needed to figure out the sequence of pouring. Well, sparkling wine always comes first. I opened that bottle anyway because I really wanted some. And this is exciting. This is a wine I did send out a little Facebook blurb uh, about earlier in the week, but this is to announce that we finally have a fantastic champagne quality and style sparkling wine from nowhere other than England. This is from the area of Kent in southeast England. And this is where there is soil that is very much like the soil of Champagne. Have you ever heard of the Cliffs of Dover? Those chalky soils that the cliffs consist of are also pervasive here. And uh, those are the same soils 
that go in a band under the English Channel and resurface in places like Chablis and Sancerre and where else? Champagne. So very champagne quality stuff. This is what the Royals like to drink. This is Chapel Down Brut and I'm going to make sure it's good. I've been making sure several times this morning, but now I have to really, really make sure. Because this is the video, right? It's serious. Oh, it's beautiful. We're going to pour it in a really nice champagne glasses too, these lemon glasses that we carry. Actually, we don't carry any. We're having a hard time finding anymore, so we're hoarding these now. Mm. Mm. Beautiful froth, really nice texture. The bubbles are fine. This is easily the equivalent of champagne at the same price and quality. And it's uh, made of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Pinot Blanc, a little Pinot Blanc in there too. So four different champagne grapes happen in this one beautiful thing from Chapel Down. Exciting, right? It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the sparkling wine of the week. Very nice. Now let's tell you about the bright white. We always do a white that's kind of like uh, no oak and high in acid and very refreshing for hot summer Livermore Valley days. Whether you're in Pleasanton or Livermore, did you know that you're in either place, you're within the Livermore Valley American Viticultural Area, the AVA, Livermore Valley. So if you're growing grapes in your backyard here in Pleasanton, you can say Livermore Valley on your label. How about that? Well, this is actually a wine that we used to make more of in the Livermore Valley, at least a wine type. This is a white Bordeaux. And um, historically, uh, this area was pretty famous for its Sauvignon Blanc Semillon blends, uh, inspired by Bordeaux. Well, we're going to the inspiration. We're going all the way back to Bordeaux for this. This is Ambre de Maltus, and it is 70% Sauvignon Blanc, 30% Semillon. And the uh, idea of always doing a crisp white is slightly violated this time because this particular white, with you know great varieties that are known for being brisk and refreshing, this is amplified a little bit by oak barrels, not new ones, but I think seven or eight months in barrel has rounded out this wine, perhaps added a teeny tiny touch of vanilla. But this is how great white Bordeaux are usually rendered. The very inexpensive ones never see an oak barrel and they're just zingers and rather simple. But this is more complex. Anybody who likes great Chardonnay should have a look at this fantastic white Bordeaux. Does it smell and taste like Chardonnay? No, but I'm talking more about the texture. It's a little creamier, a little richer. It did go through malolactic fermentation and saw a little barrel time. Very complex. It would be fantastic with a richer white fish like halibut. Maybe prawns off of the grill. Scallops, certainly. Mm. Mm -hmm. A little more mouthfeel. Not as crispy and zany as some of the crisp whites that we put on the menu, but it's also not fat and oaky and buttery. It is kind of medium. It's got a nice comforting texture and it's so refreshing. There's wonderful energy in this wine. You gotta try the Ombre the Ombre de Maltus. We also carry their red wine. Some of you will remember that Maltus name. All right, now for the rosé. Well, the, I had been saying, a since we only got two cases of this iconic rosé from Kermit Lynch, the importer, we had decided not to put it on a wine bar. Well, it's been a slow month. This is not flying out of here. Let's put it on the wine bar, especially because I want to taste it with you. And I'm looking for my skinny glass, and it's... There it is. Okay. I think this is the appropriate glass. However, uh, we could have a little debate about which glass is better for this particular rosé from Sancerre, because did you know that Sancerre rosé is by law required to be made entirely of what grape? Anybody know? Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Sancerre Rosé is not made of Sauvignon Blanc, obviously, because that's a white grape, but that's what Sancerre White is made of. If you see red Sancerre or pink Sancerre, it is going to be made entirely of Pinot Noir. Hoo -hoo. That's nice. That's fun. That is very aggressive to the nose in a happy way, just like straightens out my nose hairs. Mm. Sancerre Rosé is one of the greatest rosés in the world, I believe. It's never inexpensive. 
especially one that's iconic and famous because Kermit Lynch has been bringing it over for years. Um, but it's worth it. Delightful on the palate. It's got nice enrichment of Pinot's kind of like more satin, silky textures, but it's also nervy at the same time. It's a great game in your mouth.